let's talk about the risks and rewards of covered calls. First, consider the ways you can profit from this strategy. You own the stock and benefit from its appreciation. And because you own the stock, you also receive any dividends it issues. Finally, you receive the premium from calls sold. If that option expires worthless, then the obligation is gone and the premium is entirely profit. So how do we measure the performance of a trade like this? There are really two considerations. First, the trade is profitable if the stock doesn't drop more than the call premium plus dividends received. Second, the trade outperforms the underlying if the stock closes below the strike plus the call premium. Let's take a look at an example to illustrate these concepts. First, we'll buy 100 shares of a stock trading at 100. We'll then sell the 105 calls for $3. We know there are $2 in dividends expected prior to expiration, so we can think of this call as being about $7 out of the money. Here's the P&L relative to a pure stock position. If the stock closes at or below the strike price at expiration, then the option will expire worthless. The value of the book will be the value of the stock plus the call premium and dividends received. On the other hand, if the stock closes above the strike price at expiration, then it's assumed that the option will be exercised and the stock will be called away. The return will be capped at 110 based on the shares being sold at 105 plus the call premium and dividend. However, you should be careful about expectations if the stock is being traded near the strike price at expiration. After hours movement can push the option into or out of the money, and most options will be automatically exercised if they are in the money at all. It's also very common for an in-the-money call to be exercised the day before they go ex-dividend if their time value remaining is less than the amount of the impending dividend. That's because the stock and dividend are worth more than the option. If you really don't want to sell the stock, be sure to get out of that position. Now, when evaluating the performance of a trade like this, you can see how the trade has a greater range of profitability than the underlying. You'll turn a profit as long as the underlying doesn't drop more than the dividends and premium received. At the same time, the trade beats the underlying performance if the stock closes at or below the strike price plus call premium received. This creates a sweet spot for trade performance, where the covered call is both profitable and beats the underlying performance. The width of this range will vary by the underlying, term, and strike, but it's important to note that it's very difficult to consistently hit this range when trading covered calls, so you shouldn't expect to be consistently profitable and consistently beating the underlying performance. You're better off picking one of those goals and optimizing your strategy for it. We talk more about covered call selection in the next video. Besides the standard risk of the underlying dropping considerably, there are other risks that you should keep in mind in a covered call strategy. First, there is a real risk of early exercise immediately prior to ex-dividend when the dividend exceeds the remaining time value for an in-the-money call. You may also find yourself in the situation where you need to buy back the call early, in which case you should account for the liquidity costs if you're dealing with illiquid options, or options deep in the money, it can cost quite a bit to fill those orders. This is an important consideration when selling the call in the first place. For example, if you sell a call for only five cents, then you're almost surely going to lose any profit potential if you ever need to buy that call back for any reason. Finally, don't forget that you'll need to hold the covering stock until you close the short call position. Unless you have the clearance to be short naked calls, your broker will require that you buy back those calls before you sell the stock. This is an important consideration because your opinion of the stock might change over time, and getting out of the strategy will involve unwinding the calls first. It's also important to understand that you can still lose money over time even when the stock is trending in the bullish direction. For example, suppose you buy stock at 100 on day one while also selling a weekly call struck at 105 for a dollar. By day five, the stock surges to 110, and you decide to buy back the call in order to keep the stock. Overall, your account is up on paper, although you booked a loss on the call. You then sell a call for the following week struck at 115 for another dollar. Unfortunately, the stock drops back to 101 on day 12. It's now up 1% over two weeks, 
Your short call expires worthless, so you keep that premium. However, your account is down overall since you booked a bigger loss on your first call than you gained back on the stock and second call. This is a contrived example to illustrate the point that you can be right about the stock and wrong about the trade, but it happens often enough that you should understand that these kinds of risks are out there. In this video, we discussed the risks and rewards of covered call trades. We also talked about how and why these trades can be profitable versus when they can beat the underlying's performance. Finally, we took a look at some of the risks that every covered call investor needs to be aware of when considering their positions. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below or reach out to us at hello at quantia.com. As always, good luck and good hunting.